What's the worst that can happen? Nothing. <laughs> right, hello. And hello. Welcome Thank to you. the very to the very first live stream of Accountants the Sexy Changed My Mind. Um as we've experienced Ooh. three bazillion <laughs> three bazillion problems today, I'm not sure what else could possibly go wrong. Um, but we're here now, we should be live in the Facebook group, and if you just bear with me one moment, I'm going to double check because we might not be actually talking to anyone at all, That's so bear true. with me. We could be talking to ourselves. <laughs> hey, I'm actually seeing us in the group. This is all good Yay! stuff. <laughs> oh, it's been brilliant. There's obviously been no problems whatsoever, Kelly, has there? No, it's yeah, no, been, now it's on smooth. It's been plain sailing. It's been really smooth, honest. <laughs> Hey, I don't mind sharing what goes wrong as well as what goes right because no, you know what well, we, I mean, we cannot get it right all the time. Exactly. And my little dog is very happy because we managed to go out and walk her in between See? the sort of technical stuff. So we're all good. It was meant to be. She was obviously it crossing was. her legs and she needed to go. She was and she was just about to start barking at me as well. So it would have gone pretty wrong. So here we are. Well, I, you know, I did it for you. <laughs> right. Thanks. Right. So um, this is not normally how we start the Accountants and Sexy Changed My Mind podcast. Normally I say, welcome, Philippa. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and just before I let you give a proper explanation of who you are and what you do, let me just tell the people who are listening and maybe even watching now why you're on this show. So... I saw um, a brand called Wild Bookkeeping pop up and they were absolutely fabulous and I just kept on seeing it again and again and again and again um, and it transpires that you are the person who helped her create the brand in the first place and I was so, um, so excited about it and that I even on the show to talk about her brand and and the, and the trans and the brand story behind it. so I'm really pleased that you're able to come on and join us because oh. it would be good to understand the journey that you took her on and other clients um so thank you uh, well thank you so much um yeah it's great to be here and it's always lovely when you hear that work is, is you know, what, what you've done has really changed people's perceptions of a business because that's yeah. what it's all about. Um, I actually spoke to Penny the other day and she was like, oh, somebody came up to me recently and said, your brand is stunning. That is just such an amazing, amazing yeah. uh, piece of work. And I was like, well, that just makes me feel so good for her, yeah. you know, at the end of the day. For her, for sure, because it's definitely, branding is definitely come it's come from and what you've done is you've got it out of her but to go on that journey and, and to tell those stories and to really understand how much the brand means to you it's not an easy thing it's not an easy no. thing and, and you need somebody who's a bit more experienced with this to sometimes bring that out and I think that's what you do very well yeah, yeah I mean essentially what I like to you know how I like to describe it is that we're all just too close to ourselves you know yeah we we don't necessarily see in ourselves anything that's unique or different you know I think we all struggle just sometimes to get through the day and have that confidence and you know oh, yeah. all of those good things so you know when Penny came to me um yeah her her kind of first words were really typical which is I need you to help me um yeah. there's absolutely nothing different about me and so I said, right, let's get some preparation. Let's get you thinking about what you do know and what you don't know and, and how we can progress. And she pulled together this questionnaire, which, which I, I get all of my clients to do. And the only thing she could talk about was that she worked with Xero. She was, it was all about working with the cloud. She had no idea about who her clients would be. She had no idea about what made her different. Um, mm. She when I asked her about her competition, she didn't know. So, you know, it was really a bit of a blank canvas. And I think you'll agree that she's gone from blank canvas to 
flourishing flower mm. who is really clear about where her business is going. And that yeah. is, for me, just a, a fantastic um, result, really. Yeah, I didn't know about Penny before. Um, I didn't know about Penny before um, Wild Bookkeeping came along. And I don't know whether that's because it was under her name and it wasn't very recognisable. But I have a suspicion that it's a lot to do with the brand gave her confidence and ideas and the creativity of, um, you know, of actually putting herself out there and being more visible. And I think that's a brand done, does that people don't understand. Yeah. It's not just a name or it's not, not just a logo. It's a confidence and a story. Yeah, I mean, she said to me, she, she is now kind of very, very confident. And, and I think mm. as a person, she is, you know, she's very intelligent, she's very chatty, she's very engaging. But I don't think she had any confidence around, you know, marketing her business. That was the real mm. part of it. Mm. And what she's been given is a lot of material to work with. So once she realised that what makes her her, you know, all of the kind of the wild swimming and all of that good stuff, yeah. actually could you, she could use that and expand on it and apply it to sort of talking about her business. And once yeah. she'd realised that, she was like, oh, my God, I've got ideas. I've got, you know, it's all kind of coming out. And then we couldn't stop her, essentially. But I think <laughs> that that's the important bit, which is it's the difference between sitting there uh, thinking I'd better do a post on LinkedIn mm. and about to actually saying I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Yeah. It's time I'll build onto this. And that. So it, it's... It really makes a big difference. Yeah, it's powerful. So um, let's just kind of backtrack a little bit and tell people how, um, how you've got into this game and why you're the champion of Unique. So, I mean, I've been working with brands for 30 years, pretty much, across all kinds of things, automotive, fashion, retail. Um, and what I had to do really was find that kind of key insight hence the name Insight 101, that made yeah. the difference between a brand that was really going places and a brand that was a little bit of a kind of, you know, a bit of a non-entity. So after 30 years, I thought, well, I really want to set up my own business and I want to work with smaller um, businesses too to, to bring all of that value that I've mm. um, acquired over the years. Um, so, so that's really... Um, the start of it. Champion of the unique, I found that actually when I look back at my own business, um, people are always telling me, no, you can't do that. No, that doesn't fit in with what we're doing. No, no, no. Um, and I suddenly thought, do you know what? I've been fighting a losing battle. I've been going kind of upstream when everybody else is going that way. And mm. I really want to give other people the opportunity to be able to stand out rather than being a little whimper in the corner. Um, yeah. So that, that's where I came from, really, and that's why I'm champion of the unique. I just want people to be able to co be confident in themselves and to show, show up, show who mm. they really are, but also make a business and a brand that they're proud of and that their team's proud of. Because it's not just about Penny, who we were talking yeah. about. She has a team behind her, and they love the brand. Yeah. Um, and they feel really excited about it. Yeah, I found the, um, the the story, the Penny Penny's story, and about actually the whole brand revamp came about because of the change of name for her children in the first place, you know. So I think most of the time, not most of the time, a lot of the time, people just say, I need a company, I need a company name, can't bother to think about it, there we go, there's my name, people will know me, you know, jobs are good and... Um, yeah. But actually, as, as families grow, change, you know, and then progress, you know, the, the name doesn't necessarily mean as much to you. And, and, and it's not going to give you, lead you in the way that your goals, uh, lead you in a way that's going to help you achieve your goals either. So Penny wants to have an exit plan, for example. There wasn't one there mm -hmm. with Penelope Allard Accounting or Bookkeeping, yes. was it? I can't remember. Yeah, you know, yeah. so yeah, the, her family situation really, really drove that. Um, and I think it was her children like pecking at her to say, you need to do this, that actually took her over yeah. the edge. 
And I, I think now, probably, if you were to speak to her family, they'd say that they can't stop her. You know, I had, yeah. I had a call from her recently where she's like, Philippa, I need to think about trademarks. You know, Ooh, I really want to make yes. sure that my brand name is, is, is you know, protected. is untouchable and protected. Yeah. And I was like, this is fantastic. So yeah. obviously I put her in touch with the lady that I use and they're now yeah. having that conversation. But I don't think she would have expected that. And I'm not yeah. sure that her family would. But I think, I mean, a lot of people, certainly accountants, and, and let's not um, beat around the bush, a lot of people use their own name. You know, we've all mm -hmm. seen names above the door, and, it, and it's yeah. based on the partners. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's quite a safe way of working. It's quite traditional. It's well known. Um, but I think these days, accountants are truck you know, they're expected to bring a little bit more to the party. They need to be a bit more approachable. They need to really convince people to choose them rather than, you know, somebody else. And I don't think that necessarily having your name over the door um, always helps you. I'm not saying it, you know, there are obviously lots and lots of businesses and firms that, that work really well. But if you want to be that little bit different and you want to carve out your own little section in the market then sometimes having a complete rebrand and thinking about the name and thinking what that name actually means yeah. um, can be important and powerful so if somebody says to you oh i love that name why is that you know the difference is oh well that's my name you know that's the name of the partners or um well it's this name because of this, this and this, this is my story, this is how it came about, this is what it means, this is what it, how it applies to the service that we give you. Now that's mm. a conversation, isn't it, and a relationship builder, rather than a kind of a statement of fact, which I don't think gets you very far. Yeah, I think accountants in general like fact, yeah. because that's the way that they're built. And exactly. to reach outside of that and to get, I'm not saying that they're not creative because there is a, a, a whole breadth of different accountants and different personalities out there. Absolutely. But typically they are trained to look at fact um, and it's hard to get your, your mind out of that and into something more creative. So what advice would you give if, there, if there's somebody out there, and I know there's at least one person in this group considering rebranding at the moment, but if they have their, the name above their door, Mm -hmm. and they're looking at changing what kind of steps would they need to go through to to get that well i mean i, I think first of all well done if if you know somebody is really uh, prepared to think outside of the box and as mm -hmm. you've said there are lots of different accountants lots of different personalities but i think there's something for everyone and for those who want to step out slightly then you know it, it it's quite easily done this is not an extensive piece of work. It's not massively expensive. Um, it requires, if you are a solo business owner, it's a couple of Zoom meetings, a couple of mm. hours each, where we really interrogate about you, your life, your reason for getting into accounting or bookkeeping. And really, I'm looking for something different. You know, I'm looking for that, that non-rational response. So Penny, yeah. I think, said to you, when I worked with her, I just kept saying, why, 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 yeah. why? Um, so that I could actually scratch below the surface. Yeah. And, and that's how I work, really, which is I'm looking for that little something, that little mm. light that I think is a great, a great insight that will um, really work for your brand. Yeah, I could imagine that's quite um, scary to some because one of the things um, Penny also said was that you were like a psychiatrist and a therapist and all kinds of stuff. And I'd imagine that's because you're really getting to the nitty gritty and the, and the deep. Um, and you can't do that on your own, can you? It's hard to kind of ask hard. yourself. Yeah. Well, I think one of the, one of the things that um, happens is people do ask you to do that. You know, in all kinds of things, whether it's HR or, you know, people are always saying, you know, really think about yourself and think about your values and your meaning. But I think it's actually quite difficult for somebody to do that themselves. Um, 
and obviously I, I go as far as somebody wants, but I do like to begin to sort of pick away at that and, and you know, sort of go beyond those rational responses. Mm. Um, I mean, every single person I've worked with, I think, has kind of gone, oh, that's thera- that was a bit of a therapy session, but I really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, and when I show back what I've, I've gained, I mean, Penny, for instance, she was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you really get me. Yeah. I just, you know, that is 100% right. And yeah. I was like, well, yeah, because I've, I've really gone through it. And I'm, my background is research. Right. So I've spoken to lots of different people about lots of different brands and products. And I, I kind of know what I'm listening for. You know, that mm-hmm. little bit of sparkle, which mm-hmm. I think we all, we can all have a little bit of sparkle that helps us to bring the right client to us. Definitely. I I want to go back to something you said earlier as well. When uh, Penny first came to you, she was talking about how she's a cloud bookkeeper and there's lots of zero there. Um, And this is something that many people kind of cling on to. Um, What advice would you give them if they're centering their brand and their business around the tools that they use? um, What would you say to them about that? Yeah, well, I've listened to some really good conversations recently about that. So I know that Heather Townsend was talking to, um, I think it was a guy from Zero actually, um, and he was saying, you know, it's becoming, technology is becoming something that is, that is available to everybody. So mm. it's now becoming a bit of a hygiene factor. So it's not really differentiating you because, you know, everybody's on board with it. Mm. So what you need to do next is go that one step further and and say how are we different then because Mm -hmm. it's not enough to say we're friendly or we're um you know so uh, i spoke to uh, an accountant the other day and they said oh well we're different and i said oh how are you different and he said well we care and i said well not wishing to be rude but if you didn't care I'd be worried, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't choose, you know, so saying that you're professional yeah. or you're caring or you're friendly, that to me feels like I would expect that. That would be the, the, the sort of base level requirement for me. Mm. And then I would be looking for something else that would make me want to, to choose them. Mm. So I and think technology is- has become, it was defining, but now it's, it's a bit of a level playing field again, I think. And again, there is such a breadth of different types of accountants out there. There's those that do the statutory accounts and there's those that go way above. But you still mm. need that, that reason, that, that kind of spark to choose them. And I think that the question of USPs comes up a lot, especially, obviously, in both of our fields. Yes. And it isn't anything necessarily that's going to set you apart that's utterly unique anymore. You know, accounting yeah. services are accounting services. But the way you go about it and the way that you work with customers and the feeling that you give them, now that's something that can change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, I was saying to somebody the other day, there is, there's very few things in the world that are unique. You know, let's mm. be honest. But every single person and every single team is unique. Yeah. You know, because we're all very different people and there's something about us that means that there's nobody else there that's mm. similar but the key is to find that isn't it yeah. you know um and and you know i can't do it for myself i wish i could but i can't you know i would love to find somebody like me to go philippa this is what you're all about um yeah. because because it's not easy to do that you can self-reflect but it can only go so far i think yeah i um, mm. as you've seen i've played around with my branding recently um yeah utterly inspired by a book called Be More Pirates um, and I'm, I am I just went literal I was like yes yes I understand this book it's what I'm aiming for so I just I just went down that route um, but I love the fact that I can play around with it because it made me all of a sudden go from just like oh, a bit like bored to actually I can do a lot of I can do a lot of have, and have a lot of fun and, and create with this it just brought, inspired me which was yeah. great but more than that, it's about creating something for the future. So it's about creating change, which made me look at everything that I'm doing in my business. So, for example, how I come up with um, ideal clients and then 
how actually I'm not an inclusive person when it comes to it. And it's made me reevaluate how I go about stuff. Um, mm. So it's an interesting journey, but it's not easy on your own. I have to be inspired by something. Luckily, it was it just happened to be a book. Yeah, no. well, I mean, that's brilliant. That's, that's as good a story as any, really. Um, the starting point for any brand can be, you know, there could be lots of different angles that you can take. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, but I think what you've said about the freedom it gives you and the creativity is the most important mm -hmm. piece, which is because you have a theme there, you can start to say, how can I play with that? You know, yeah. what would I do as Captain Kelly? You know, um, how can I bring the pirates bit in, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's what I try to get across to a lot of accountants, which is we all have lots of business issues and business questions, problems, whatever. A lot of the time you can say, what would my brand do? So yeah. for instance, there was a LinkedIn post on pricing the other day. Should I put prices on my website? If so, how do I do it? Now, from your perspective, a pirate, you know, you may have a different perspective on that. So how would a pirate work on it? You know, what would the tone be? Would yeah. you show how much it was? Um, you know, all of those good things. So the, the brand gives you foundations, really, to talk yeah. about all kinds of things. Um, so, for instance, if you're all about being kind of quite rebellious and in your face as an accountant, for instance, then you know, you'd probably go, damn right, I'm going to show my prices on my website. And if you don't like it, you know, yeah. tough. Yeah, I want but to go against the you, grain. But that's how you would do it. You'd kind of think, well, that's the tone, that's the attitude. You know, there's no sort of worrying in the background. I'd just slap it down on the page and go, it's there for everybody to see. Yeah. But that's because you have a brand to follow. So I've, um, I've read a few branding books and branding is definitely not the key area. I have to cover it because if we don't understand the brand, the marketing side Absolutely. becomes particularly yes. difficult. Yeah. Um, but the marketing books that I've, I've read, there's some really cool kind of um, things that you can do, like viewing your brand as a person and looking at them as, as they are a person, which is kind of what you were saying. And I've always found that quite... Um, quite an interesting one you know what would they do what would what would this person yeah. say um, yeah. and I think that gives it a more friendly not necessarily friendly but more human feel when you look at it that yeah. way not what does this corporate company do exactly and I think um, so having been a researcher and talked to a lot of people about a lot of things what you get back sometimes if you ask a question somebody will come back with quite a rational answer it's not because mm. they want to it's just you know mm. so a lot of the time in order for us to get more of an emotional response that was kind of deep-seated you'd say what would happen if this you know if this person or this product came to life or what mm. happened what type of conversation would they have or it what it does is it takes it away as you said from that sort of day-to-day and enables somebody to look at it and kind of go, well, actually, they probably look a bit like this. And it, mm. they would always say, oh, I feel really silly saying this. But, you know, I imagine this brand as this sort of person. Um, it just gives people that ability to kind of go to, to look at it in a slightly different way. So yeah. it's, a very, it's a great technique. So what if then, what if a brand, a, the brand that someone's trying to build does it have to be like them or could it be something completely different? It could be something completely different. Um, so, I mean, from my perspective, um, and I hate this phrase, but I'm quite human centred. Um, so yeah. I like to start with a person and kind of go, what is about you that is unique? Mm. Um, and, and then allow them kind of filter all of that through their brand and through their business. Because if you are a service-based business, then it is all about you and it's all about your team. However, you know, from the way that you approached your brand and read a book and suddenly you thought, that's a great idea. Um, mm. That's, that's um, very, very um, 
good way of doing it as well. I think it's probably better for product. Usually, you know, mm. we can think about imagery and using that sort of approach. If you've got like a, a drink or, you know, uh, a chocolate bar or whatever, it, it, it's much easier to sort of play. But I think when you're a service-based um, business, a lot of the time, unless you are, you have absolutely, you know, you're really into like zebras or, you know, something like that, which is a part of you and everybody knows about, and we can just kind of explode that out. Then I think you need to find a way of kind of accessing that person and finding something which resonates. So with wild bookkeeping, for instance, that doesn't necessarily just talk about Penny, but it mm -hmm. talks about how she approaches work with yeah. clients and the sorts of clients that she's looking for yeah so with with penny and i, I know we're talking a lot about her and she's listening as well by the way Is so, she? Hello, penny. Hey, hi, penny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with penny what i found fascinating when i was interviewing her was i thought the brand was about swimming i thought yeah. she was bringing in that element of, of adventure in, into it because that's what she does but that's not necessarily the truth because it came from the photo that her daughter had taken which actually showed her a, a kind of crossroads a point in her life where she was attacking with courage and conviction um yeah. and that to me and i i got goose pimples i, I got goose yeah. pimples because i hadn't realized just how much it meant to her um yeah. so do you go through like do you do you, do you rummage through their photos what what yeah. do you what do you I, do no um so it all stems from the conversation obviously and that you know the sort of the depth of that conversation um and you're right that i think um penny had a photograph that was particularly life affirming she was standing in the waves that was the day that her divorce came through and so it just beautifully merged everything together and and she, i think i mean she can speak more to that but i think it gives her a a source of strength when she mm. looks at it etc and that confidence but uh, equally i mean it's what came first the chicken or the egg because water did play a massive part in her life so yeah. she used to go sailing with her father pretty much every day she went into the water looked like when she got pregnant she decided she couldn't sail anymore so she decided to go swimming and the water has played an important part so she gets up mm -hmm. the first thing she does is look at the tide times yeah. so it stands to reason that yeah. any sort of life-affirming moment will be celebrated or whatever in the water isn't it yeah um but yes i mean she came back to me and went oh my god i've got this amazing photograph that would be really good okay. um so i was like okay that's a great illustration because what i tend to do is when I write up their brand blueprint, I say, your concept, your theme is all about this. Mm -hmm. And then I tend to search out images that I think kind of illustrate it. So I remember yeah. having, um, there was a video of these really rough waves. I said, you know, we can do something with that. Um, that's really lovely. And I think once I'd shown her that, she was like, oh, this, there's this just amazing photograph of me in the water that is very poignant and so he said okay that is going to be yeah. kind of central to who you are so i guess then that there, there was a journey and then, and then this journey has kind of just um pulled things out of her so she can show you to so the visual side of the brand um is it is the runs the same as as the messaging yeah so yeah. i don't think i i would ever get to that stage with clients when, when talking about branding. I don't think ever, yeah. anyone's ever come up to me and said, I need, there's a photo that just encapsulates everything we've said. Um, so if people are interested in, in working with you, um, we've had a couple of conversations and I'm sure there's there's something that we're gonna do in the future, but if people are interested in working with you, what, what do they do, where do they go? Okay, so, I mean, I work a lot on LinkedIn. So if you look me up um, there and message me directly, um, or you can go to my website, www.insight101.co.uk. Um, you know, and we basically we have a sort of half an hour conversation about how it works, 
um, you know, what's expected, um, you, you know, we sort of book in the time and it's a two hour slot and another two hour slot and in between those I start to write up the story and the brand blueprint. So by the time we get to the end point, they've got everything that they need there. And then, I mean, even down to the point that a lot of what I write can go onto their website straight away. So they yeah. almost have the content and the imagery and the comms kind of line, everything yeah. that they need just to sort of go and, and really start up properly. Okay, this is this is good stuff. So I'm going to link to you on um, on the podcast and everywhere else that this is posted. Um, but and that that's actually all we've got time for. But there is one more question. So um, what do you think the sexiest thing about accountants is? Oh, <laughs> the, the hardest, <laughs> the hardest question. Do you know what I I saw something today. Um, and from an accountant and they were talking about how important their role is not just to work out somebody's finances but actually um to help help them in in what is a really really difficult time at the moment economically financially all yeah. of those things and you know he told the story of how a few years ago he had worked with a client whose business partner had committed suicide, sadly. Um, and he was really shaken up by that mm. and realized that the relationship that they have, um, accountant and client, are inc it's incredibly important. It's not just about the numbers, but it's about somebody's livelihood. It's about um, you know, working with them on their business and they have to have hard and soft skills, you know, yeah. they need to be able to have a relationship and a conversation, but also be able to do the numbers as well. And I think that is the really sexy part about accounting is, you know, it's the fifth emergency service or whatever you want to, to call it. It really is. It's more than the numbers. Yeah. It's it's helping people with their lives and their businesses. And I don't think there's anything more important than that. Yeah. No, I, I, I obviously completely agree. The, I think the world today and how just how many businesses there are today and how many businesses there are going to be tomorrow, we literally, and I say we collectively, we cannot accountants. They are absolutely pinnacle to everything that we do. Um, but sometimes they need reminding of this. And that's what here, we're here for. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I think, you know, now is the time where accountants really i see a lot of development a lot of modernization i think there's a really exciting it's a really exciting time for them yeah. um, and there's a lot of newness a lot of new businesses coming in um, and i think that's really fantastic for the industry itself hmm. yeah definitely right that is all we've got time for i'm going to end this live video so goodbye for now everybody great to talk um, to you <laughs> Thank you very much for being my guest and I'm looking forward to sharing this with the rest of the world. Thank you, Kelly. And yeah, it, it's been a real pleasure. Hopefully.